everything I want, everything I need, you are. When nobody else is listening to me, you are. Before my heart took its first beat, you are. My name is Haley. Have you ever learned how to play an instrument? Maybe the guitar? Or the violin? How about the kazoo? <laughs> well, if you have, you know that learning an instrument takes cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. It's true. To learn an instrument, you need to work with a teacher. You need encouragement and support from your friends and family. And then you need one more thing, practice. I know all about practice. I had to practice a lot to learn how to play the piano. And at first, it didn't come naturally. I had to make a habit of practicing every day. And little by little, started to get the hang of it. What wasn't natural at first became more natural. And now, I can make beautiful music. Cooperation can be like learning how to play a new instrument. It may not come naturally to you at first, but if you practice working together, like in today's story, Cooperation can become a way of life. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to practice my kazoo some more. I need some work. See you in a little. The Bible, it's 66 books of history 
Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Before Jesus returned to heaven, he told his friends to wait for special power from God's Holy Spirit. Yes, we'll do. Got it. Um, what? None of Jesus' friends were sure what to expect. But sure enough, as they were gathered together in Jerusalem, God sent his spirit as tongues of flame. Immediately, the believers were able to communicate in different languages. Peter even preached an amazing sermon to the crowds who had gathered in the city for the Feast of Pentecost. All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus. Through the power of God, the brand new church was off to an incredible start. Years later, a man named Luke described the early church like this. The believers studied what the apostles taught. They shared their lives together. They ate and prayed together. Everyone was amazed at what God was doing. They were amazed when the apostles performed many wonders and signs. Okay, that's a lot already. But Luke was so excited about the early church that he couldn't stop there. They shared everything they had. They sold property and other things they owned. They gave to anyone who needed something. Every day, they met together in the temple courtyard. They ate meals together in their homes. Their hearts were glad and sincere. They praised God. They were respected by all the people. Every day, the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. You notice a pattern? In everything they did, the early believers worked together. Let's take a closer look. The believers studied what the apostles taught. They learned about God together. Those who had been with Jesus, his closest friends, shared the things he had taught them with the new believers. They would have reminded each other of one of the most important things Jesus ever said. Here is my command. Love one another, just as I have loved you. Those very first Christians discovered something important. Love isn't just a feeling. It's something you do. Those believers prayed together often. Please, God, give us the power of your spirit. Show us how to love others like you do. They knew that just a short time before, God's power had raised Jesus from the dead, and they knew they couldn't continue God's work without that power. The believers also ate together. Hey, just caught a bunch of extra fish. Help yourselves. I made red lentils. Old family recipe. Me and my little granddaughter baked all the honey cakes to share. People who had a lot of food brought extra so that no one went hungry and everyone had enough. In fact, food wasn't the only thing the believers shared with each other. Some of the believers were well-to-do and had money and land, and they opened up their homes to people to meet and stay there. They even sold land and other things they owned so the money could be shared with all those who needed it. What do I need three extra robes for? You take this one. It'll keep you nice and warm. No one who was part of the early church went without food or shelter or clothing. Every day, the believers met together. They shared everything about their lives, the good and the bad. My pet lamb is sick. I'm sorry. That's really sad. They discovered that when they told each other the hard things and prayed about it together, they could find joy, even when things didn't go their way. And no matter what happened, the believers praised God together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. In everything they did, 
the believers in the early church worked together. Soon, people started to take notice. They saw that unlike the rest of the world, Jesus' followers valued kids and women and old people and poor people. They saw the love the believers had for each other and for outsiders too. And because of this, God added more and more new believers to the church every single day. For the early followers of Jesus, cooperation was a way of life. They ate together, they prayed together, they shared everything they had, and other people noticed and wanted to find out more. Wouldn't it be cool if we could work together like that? Maybe we can. It really starts with one person seeing another person and then asking, how can I help? Then they come together and then they start cooperating. Then someone else sees and joins in. And before you know it, they're making beautiful music. It may not come natural at first. That's why you have to practice. You need to make a habit of working together with other people. Open your eyes and really look for people who might need something. If you don't see anyone around you who needs anything, try asking, how can I help? You can cooperate and share with others just a little bit every day until it does come natural and it feels like a way of life. The one thing to remember today is this, make a habit of working together. You can't cooperate by yourself. So, Look for ways to work together, and soon you'll be playing a different tune. See you around, everybody. Trust in the way. Oh, 